Welcome back. Today on Dialed In DIY, I'm making a really wonderful multi-tool that's great for rechargeable batteries. My inspiration for today's project was a recent video I did where I salvaged a whole bunch of these 18650 lithium ion batteries. So I wanted to make something where I could put them in, test out the voltage, use them to plug in and power something up, and recharge them whenever I wanted to and have them as a portable power source. What you see on the screen are the basic parts that I'm going to be using today, but don't worry, I'm going to explain a little bit more about each as I'm going through this project, and you can find a lot more details in the description below. So the way I've got this set up is I have a project box that I'm using and I put the battery holder on one side and then I laid out all the other parts on the other side of the box and then went and started marking out exactly where I needed to make holes in the case so that I could attach wires and put in the switches and plugs. I found that a quick and easy way to make holes in plastic project boxes is to get an inexpensive soldering iron and just use it to melt in the holes. I just do recommend to work in a highly well ventilated area and make sure to wear a dust mask or some kind of a filtered mask since you're going to be melting plastics. Once I'm happy with the size and location of all the holes, I do go back and get some kind of a small file or sandpaper and just clean everything up and make nice smooth edges so that it doesn't get hard on the wiring. Also, make sure to go back with a wet rag and clean up the soldering iron so it's ready for use in the future when you need it. This little charging chip that I'm using is actually really awesome, especially because I'm using this for cheap batteries. It has several functions. It's called a TP4056 chip, and it not only allows it to charge, but it protects it against overcharging and over discharging when you're using it with these lithium ion batteries. If you want to know more information about this chip, look in the description below. But I also did a previous video just on this chip because I use them in so many different projects. The best part is, you can actually pick these up online for less than $2 each. So the two long wires on this chipboard that I added are for connecting to the battery. So I have this little battery holder that is made for these 18650 cells. And I'm just going to go ahead and attach those wires to the battery holder. I'm using this on off button switch as my power disconnect for when I'm connecting this as a power source for a battery pack. And all I'm going to do right now is connect a couple of wires so that I don't have to do it after I have it inserted into the side of the case. I have a little inexpensive digital voltage meter and I went ahead and cut the positive lead from it right in the middle so that I could add this momentary switch. This momentary switch only allows the power to go to the voltmeter when the button is pressed. A smart little user tip is to make sure to cover up any of your power connections so that you can't accidentally get a short. I'm going to do this with some heat shrink tubing, but you could also do it with electrical tape or possibly even the kind of liquid electrical tape, which I've used in some other projects too.
The inset picture shows the completed wiring that we're going to be finishing up here in just a second, but most of these steps we've already completed. You'll notice that I'm taking the positive lead or the leads from both switches and connecting it to the positive lead coming off of the charging chip. That is the one that feeds the power out from the battery source and I do want to test that before I solder them just to make sure I have good power continuity. The little battery board or charging chip actually has a micro USB port on it which allows it to get a charge when we need to plug it back in and recharge the battery. The hole I made in the case I set a little higher off the bottom of the case so I'm going to be using this thick double sided stick mounting tape to give it a little lift when I stick it to the bottom of the case. Hot glue is easy and awesome for so many things, including putting this battery holder in the bottom of the project box. I'm going to go ahead and drop some hot glue right in front of the two holes that I made for this quick connect, and I'm going to go ahead and then push down the plug and make sure from the front side that my holes line up. Before gluing down my voltage meter, I took a little thin piece of half inch PVC and put in the bottom just to raise up the voltmeter a little bit to make it easier to see and to make it easier to work with the wires. Before I decide I can rely 100% on my completed project, I grabbed some batteries of different levels of charge so I can test the voltage meter, the chip, and see when it cuts in and when it cuts out to see if my batteries are truly going to be protected and charged right. My first test is about accuracy and I'm pleased. The voltmeter and my multimeter come up with some pretty close readings. Very important warning, always make sure to check your positive and negative alignment before you insert the battery because putting it in the wrong way will quickly ruin your entire project. I was also very pleased to find out that my power board did not allow the battery to run more charge out for every battery that was below a 3 volt rating on my multimeter. I grabbed a cell phone charger with a micro USB plug on it and pushed that into the little chipboard and found that this worked perfectly as well also. The red light means it's charging and when the battery is full, a blue light will come on. And I thought, what the heck, it might make sense to be able to see the voltmeter without taking the lid off. So I marked the spot on the outside of the case and went back after the fact and cut that out. And there's one last function to test. You'll see I marked on the plug spot here, a red and a black side for positive and negative and might as well make sure it actually works as a battery pack so I'm plugging in these lights that I made in a different project. Just a quick toggle of the green button switch and we're all lit up again. So I'm really pleased I've got a battery tester, an overcharge and over discharge protection, a battery charger, and a portable battery pack all in one project. If you'd like to know a little bit more about some of the stuff used in this video, you can check out some prior video projects I did like the one on that little charging board, as well as where I salvaged all of those 18650 cells that I used. Also, I made a more dialed down version of the battery pack previously, and it made for a great compact battery pack. Thank you for spending some of your time today at Dialed In DIY. I appreciate you checking out my video, and if you liked it, or maybe got a little something out of it, I'd love it if you'd let me know by clicking that thumbs up below. I'd also love it if you'd click that subscribe button and then check off that bell to get the notifications for future videos. And feel free to come on back because there will be plenty more dialed in DIY to come.